I'm Carol Celine talking with endocrinologist Dr. Kevin Furlong. As an endocrinologist, you treat a variety of metabolic diseases, and one of them is thyroid disease. I wasn't aware how common this is until I was diagnosed myself. Yeah, thyroid disease is extremely common. Uh, the most common thyroid disease is an underactive thyroid gland. Most commonly, that's due to an autoimmune condition. Autoimmune meaning your own immune system attacks self. So if we measure these proteins, these things that the immune system makes against the thyroid, probably 15 to 20 percent of the population is positive. It doesn't mean that they're all hypothyroid. Maybe 5 percent of the population is hypothyroid. But it is a large number, and it appears to be growing. It does tend to cluster in families as well. And women especially? Women especially, more than men. Um, definitely a predominance of females over men. But also, you wonder if that's because more women are will seek medical care. Yeah, they'll go to the things doctor. off until the very end, so who knows? Yeah. Now, there's a new thyroid cancer center here at yes. Jefferson that you're involved in. Yes, we're very excited. It's actually, uh, the idea was thought of by the otolaryngology department, their surgeons here, general surgery, and my partner, Dr. Jeffrey Miller. And what we've done is, is designed a multidisciplinary approach to the treatment of thyroid cancer. So we have weekly or biweekly meetings with all these departments, and we review cases. And, and really, we try to provide a seamless approach to therapeutic care for the patient with thyroid cancer. You also have a particular interest in diabetes, and diabetes is a burgeoning problem in this country, and a lot of it seems to be tied to obesity. Absolutely. And why are obese people more prone to getting diabetes? Well, obesity is, is an epidemic as well, and it really depends on where the fat cell is. Oh. So fat cells that gather around the gut tend to secrete toxic hormones that can make blood pressure go up, make blood glucose go up, and make cholesterol go up. So clearly there's a correlation between weight and the increased incidence of all those diseases. Now I know you do research uh, as well as your uh, clinical work. Are there any trials going on in diabetes in terms of prevention? Yes, we, we are happy to be a part of a large trial here at Jefferson. It was a diabetes prevention program which started in the mid-90s here at Jefferson. Mm -hmm. It's a national trial, NIH-sponsored, National Institutes mm -hmm. sponsored. Over the past two years, I've been happy to be the principal investigator of that trial. And what we've shown in that trial is that diet and exercise are very robust interventions against diabetes. So mm -hmm. if you take a patient with prediabetes and you get them to lose 5 to 7% of their body weight and exercise 150 minutes a week, they have about a 60% decrease incident in new onset diabetes compared to somebody that doesn't do that. So we clearly learned from that trial that diet and exercise are very robust oh. interventions against prevention of diabetes. So you can actually prevent prediabetes from becoming diabetes Absolutely. if you watch your diet and you Absolutely. exercise. Absolutely. So getting people to exercise is always hard. It is difficult and I always try to preach that trial to my patients and say hey look it works we've got evidence and proof that it works but again like I talked about earlier I, I believe in finding activities physical activity that's fun and doesn't feel like exercise nothing's worse than sitting in your basement on a stationary bike watching a little time exactly who wants to do that I don't want to do that but if you find an activity that you love to do and you can engage yourself doing it doesn't feel like exercise and again I call that exercise in disguise you don't feel like you're exercising and so I try to preach to my patients to find something that they really enjoy to do that's physically active I like that exercise in disguise exactly <laughs> thanks